Welcome back everyone and this is going to be the second video of the IK rig system. So in the previous video we talked about the hips and now we're going to deal with the legs. Um, when we're building up this IK information we have to build it in a specific order. So that's why hips was first because we need the hips to be moved somewhere into world space. Once we know where the hips are then we know where the start of the leg is going to be in world space. So next, so that's why the legs is the next part. So legs are actually fairly simple because we've done this before in previous videos, especially a year ago when I was doing all the IK leg uh, solvers. So we're going to go through a little bit again today, but I'm not going to go super in depth with the actual solvers themselves. I'll probably do a quick re review of how they work a little bit, um, but I'm not going to actually go through the mathematics of the solvers themselves, but the process of actually using them and getting it ready for the IK system is what we're going to go through. So like I said, so today we're going to start with uh, the legs. So in the previous video, we had the characters move and all that moved was the hips and the, and the characters moved in, in space. Now we're going to start having the legs move around a little bit. So let's see. So let's, so let's get started. So we're going to every, so pretty much the same place as we, we were before in the previous video. I disabled a couple of things. Uh, it's actually, I already commented out the wrong lines. So I don't need I don't need Vegeta and the dinosaur right now. Uh, let's see. So the first thing is we need to start computing it, right? So we need to compute our IK information. Uh, so in the previous video we had hips, and now we're going to deal with legs. And so right now, if with legs we have two different. Things, um, or there's three bits of information that we're going to same for the limbs. And when I say legs, legs and arms are the same thing. So however we do for legs is going to work for arms as well because they are the same type of appendage. You know, they just have like this uh, a chain that just uses a regular IK solver to kind of bend everything into the end effector. So, so even though this is the leg video, this will actually be applied to arms. So we'll see arms and legs actually wailing around a little bit. Uh, without hip, uh, without the um, spine movement. So the first thing is we need a length scale. The length scale is the the scale of which the leg is fully extended, and I'll show you how you compute that. Um, direction is the direction is from the start of the leg to the end of the leg. So basically, the start of our leg to our foot. That is the direction that we're trying to define. Uh, joint direction is the direction that our knee is pointing. Um, and that's it, or our elbow. So th that is the data that we need to capture when we're um, sampling the animation. So that would be our IK post. That's information we want to save. Then let's see, we don't need to apply yet. We're not applying anything yet. First, we need to collect information. So we're going to compute. So, so yesterday we computed hip, today we're going to compute the limb. So we're going to pass in our animated pose, we're going to say which chain um, we need to update, and then which part, which structure to pass, save the data into. Like I said, since I'm calling it limb instead of leg, it, this will work for arms and legs at the same time. All right. So for computing the IK information from a sample animation, first we need to get the bone information. So, um, so since we're dealing with chains, we're going to, we're passing in our chain and we're going to grab the first bone of our chain and then the end index of our chain. Our, our limbs have a hands or they have feet. So this way, so we know exactly in world space that the end of the chain is because even though the foot and hand are not part of the chain, that's why the, I'm not using the, I'm not calling the first and last, f um, function, the end index is an easy way to compute it. The other way around it is that I have to compute the length of every bone and then compute the tail end of the last bone. So that's another solution. Um, the thing is that the tail end length is never given to you um, automatically um, from G from like, like modeling tools like Maya or Blender. So solution wise to really get the full length, you just have to go one extra bone further uh, depending on the chain. So these chains actually have an extra bone at the end that's not part of the chain, but can help us compute the length of the chain. And that's why I have that extra attribute that when we create chains that you can define the end point of the chain. So this way it makes it easier to compute. You can compute it, but it, it makes it easier if we have that end point chain. So, that's, so we're gonna consider that bone B. 
once we have that, we just need to then figure get the world position of the beginning and the end of the chain. And this creates our direct, uh, vector from A to B. So from the beginning of our shoulder to our hand, right? Um, once we have its direction, because like I said, well, the first thing we need is direction. So that's basically the first bit of IK information. We need the direction from the beginning of the chain to the end of the chain. And since that gives us like this length vector, we can then just say, well, give me the length value. So well, how, lo how long is that line from A to B? And we can debug the information so to make it visual. So this way we can see what we're dealing with. There you go. So that's the beginning of our chain. So we have bone one, bone two, and we're then going to bone, which is a uh, foot bone, which is not part of the chain, but is the end point of, of a chain that we can use to help compute a couple of things. So that's the direction. That's our IK direction we want. And from green to red, that is the length that we want. Now, the next part is that we're going to compute the scale length. The scale length is the length of the chain, or actually the length of that line divided by the length of the chain. Um, the reason why we do that is because let's say if the, the bone, if the, the leg was completely extended, like there's no bending whatsoever, that means that the length of the, the length, the IK length will equal the length of the chain. If they're if they're equal or we're like we're very very close to equal that means there's no bending like it's you know there might be like a little uh difference in like a point one or a half a point one or whatever um but that, that that's all it depends on how you do it but like for right now i think if it's, it's pretty much equal for for all the testing i've done um so so that's how we scale so we take the length of the chain divided by the length of the ik uh distance um, now, why are we, why is that, why does that matter? Why do we need that scale value? Because if I want to translate the distance from A to B, from the hip to the foot, to another skeleton, I can't give it the length of the IK, but I can, I can say, well, if, if the leg is, um, two feet long and when it's bent, the distance from the two points is one and a half feet long. So that you can say that's the scale of, uh, one, uh, 0.75. So if I go to like, uh, like another character, but the length of his leg is only one foot long. Well, if I say, if I use that scalar is like, well, well, I want 0.75. So 1.75 of one is 0.75. So now that's the length of, uh, the IK. So this way, for when I, when I apply the IK information, I say, well, here's the starting point. I know the direction and I do the scale length of it so it'll be from here to here will be 0.75 and that's my end effector and now i've just computed my end effector that i need to do for ik information so that's what the scalar is for is really to try to translate this length of bend because by doing that we can, can compute the, the uh the end effector uh, that we want and that end effector is how we then compute the actual bending aspect of it because once we have these two points we know how to bend a leg or an arm so that's what the scale value is all about. <clears throat> so like I said, it's very simple and very easy to scale it that way. Um, so now that we, we, we got a scale, the next thing is we just normalize the direction because we want to normalize it because once we do a scale, we can then apply a scale to that normalized direction to get the end effector in the future. Uh, now all our chains uh, have an alternate up and alternate forward predefined it, it's really it's really pre-computed from the t pose so this way we for every loop we don't have to do for the hip i did mention in the hip that like uh let's see where's the hip i had a comment in here oh the compute like this part can be optimized and saved into the hips the uh, data like, so like all this stuff I'm doing right here that we did in the previous video, I'm not going to do it anymore for the legs because why, why bother? It's actually more efficient to just pre-compute it once and then reuse it. Um, so I left the hip pre-computing it every time, but other parts of the body, I'm not going to bother. 
Um, for a full optimization, like a good final version, you want to probably get rid of all that math that you don't need to do and do it up front and then save it into your IK rig. So like I said, this is not a complete solution. This is a solution to teach you guys. Um, so this way you kind of see the code as we evolve it. So in this example, the, the, the alternate values are pre-computed. They're not part of this um, function. So since we know, so we're in, in our, in our RIK, we're going to use the up direction as the direction of our elbow or our, our knee. So we know where alter, uh, alternate up is, is supposed to be pointing at. So we take the alternate up and we use the first bone in a chain. So this was like I, this, uh, I did a lot of failures when it came to calculating the point of the, the knee. I did a lot of crazy things. Like I, I did the first thing was to get these two points and then get the point of the, where the elbow is and then kind of do like a, a cross section. So this way, you know, that's the direction. Now that kind of works and it kind of doesn't. It actually, the, the data is so jaggedy that, that it really kind of screws, like it creates these little artifacts in the animation. It, it, it jiggles the leg a little bit too much. Um, it, it's, it's, it's just because like the, the animation that comes from that you're getting sometimes isn't completely polished. There's probably a little bit of rotation in there that really screws things up that you wouldn't notice they see it, but if you're doing all the like wacky math, it makes no sense. Um, it, you kind of see all these little twistiness that, that you don't want it. So it really made leg walking really bad. If you, if you compute it that way. Um, I know I tried one or two other different ways, but actually the final solution that I came that to computing the length or the direction of the joint was actually just to use the first point, the first bone, and just get its direction. Just get the direction that we want it. Like, so for me, the alternate up is the forward direction in world space. It's, so it's, I define it as world space forward. So for, so ideally the point should be pointing this way. Uh, I do, do I have that? I might actually have that um, being visualized. Let me see. Ooh. Go right here. Refresh. Okay. I actually don't know what I'm looking at, to be honest. <laughs> what colors am I looking at? Uh, let's see. White is the actual direction the first bone is pointing to. It's real up direction. Uh, it's forward up, I guess. Yes. Yes, it's forward up. Uh, orange is the cross product of up and forward. Orange is the director. All right. So this bone, this is the, the four direction. So it's it's real. Um, that is its real direction that that it's pointing. So when we say okay, I'm using my alternate up. This bone, its up position is that. So the this bone, this little line right here, this green line, that's basically a four direction because that's really where the bone is pointing. The bone is pointing that way, and it's actually pointing up, right? So what I did to make sure things compute very well. I took that up direction and the direction toward our IK point and then computed um, the cross product, which creates this left axis. So from, from white to this forward orange, the IK, from like the, the alternate up to the IK direction, I got the left. Then I took the cross product of left and forward and created this other orange line. And that becomes our forward direction, even though it's not, per, it's, it, it creates this like kind of like halfway point between um, the full up and full down. It kind of, it's like a nice in, in between. And we don't, the elbow has to, the, the joint has to be a, the general direction. And I want to make sure I don't go too high or too low. So by creating this thing, I create kind of, I create this kind of um, orthogonal direction. Because since I know my IK is this way, this becomes the orthogonal up direction um, for the IK. So it's, it's really trying to create a nice IK direction, up direction that works very well with our IK forward direction. So this, so this way, nice and perfectly L shaped, um, right angle. Uh, so that's how we compute 
our joint. And like I said, it's just we just wrote we just rotate the up, we create the cross product, and then we create one more cross product to make it orthogonal. So we create the left and then we do it again and we normalize it. And that is how we compute the leg. That's 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 it. So we have we're gonna have our point, start and finish, our direction uh, for from toward the IK, we got our direction for our joint. And um, and we got our our length from A to B, which scale it scaled down to the original length of the leg. Uh, so the next step now that we got that all got it. So now we compute it. We we have the information. So if we want to, let's say we want to double check that information before we try to apply it, because I always try to double check the information. So we have our visualizer visualizer. So. Let me just comment out what we don't need. So we have our visualizer and we visualize our hip. Now we're going to visualize our limb. We pass our basically a lot of the same information, the pose, the animated pose, because we want to get the world position. So we know because IK has no world position. All it has is directions. So we need to know kind of like where do we put this, um, all the direction information. Uh, then we have our leg our chain information and then our IK information that we're, we're trying to um, render uh, so so first thing is we're going to get the length of our chain and we're going to multiply by the scale so that's that's one it's like i said we're going to we, so like at this point all i have is ik information i have no clue where our end effector is so the idea is i need to compute the end effector um <clears throat> so our first position is going to be the world position of our first bone so that's that's that and our end effector is our IK direction scaled by the length that we computed. So it's the scale length of the chain's length. And once we have that scale direction, we then add it to pose A. So the starting point, we add that, 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 that difference to A and then we get B. And then um, with the position C, that's just our, uh, we take our IK direction and I'm just going to scale it down so this way it doesn't become like a huge number and apply it to A. And then we just dump that information into our debugger and refresh. And there's our IK. So this is what RK looks like. And it's perfect. It's like our scale gets scaled exactly to where our end effector was in relation to this bone, uh, to this leg. That's the direction. It's the orthogonal uh, joint direction. And we have our two points. So computing the IK um, or visualizing the IK information shows exactly what kind of what we want. We want where the, the joint is going to be, where our end effector is going to be. So there we go. And then uh, again, just we can just uh, then we can go back and just say apply all this to every other limb. If we click refresh, ta-da! And there's our go. Now we're now everything's starting to look kind of cool, right? You know, we got all these we got all these points, um, we got all these dotted lines to kind of show you some of our direction. And you can see where elbow is going. Elbow is going exactly where it's supposed to go because it's using the alternate direction and it's using the first bone. Because ideally, like when it comes for your arm, it's it's the, that first bone in your arm that really controls the direction of your elbow. Um, your elbow doesn't move unless you that the upper arm moves. And same thing with the knee. It's 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 your it's your um your thigh bone, whatever you call it, uh your thighs that defines exactly where your knee is. So wherever your thigh is, that's where your knee is. So wherever your upper arm is, that's where your elbow is. So that's why in the end, after a lot of failures of figuring out how to to compute the direction, that I just realized that first bone is in human like you're looking in the mirror and everything else. You start to realize that that's really how the human body works, in, in technically. So it's not this big, complicated mathematic thing. It's just, even though humans are complicated, there is simplicity to the complication. So that's really how the, the how I came to solve it. It's just like you, I tried all the hard ways, and then I just realized that, that it's actually actually uh, fairly simple, and it works fairly well. Like it's great. Like I can't I can't wait till the final video when you see all the animations running. All right, so now we've visualized it, we computed and we visualized. Now the only thing is applying it. And applying it is almost technically the same way as how we visualize it. Uh, it, really, it really is.
Um, so the last thing is now we need to apply it. So we have our apply rig. And uh, let's just apply it to one bone. And first things first, we need to bring in Vegeta. So if I click refresh, Vegeta now is here and he's he's got his leg bent already. He's got his, his rig starting to bend his knee. All right. So let's see how we apply the IK. So we have our apply rig. So we apply the hips. So like I said, we have to do this in order. And that's why I have this thing to do. Spine should be done before arms. So we apply our legs, then we'll apply the spine, and then we apply the arms because our spine is going to move where our shoulder is going to be. So we can't really do the arms until the spine, but we can animate the, the, the arms. It's just it won't have any of that spine movement uh, applied to it. So it'll move. It might not look perfect, but you get the general idea of the, how the animation is running. All right, so we're going to apply limb. So we're going to pass in our rig. We're going to pass in our tr uh, trim chain and we're going to pass in our le uh, limb information and our limb information is the ik uh information this stuff all right so a lot of my ik solvers uses uh world transforms um they can be rewritten to only use uh to only use rotations but i think for for when i need to debug and test things it's easier if i have the world transforms so world transforms adds a extra com computation which is for most often it's not needed so just keep that in thought that i'm using world transforms if i was going to um if i was going to like really do this for real i would actually probably recreate my ik solvers to use only rotations and then create a, a version of it for transforms and then if i need to debug it i'll use the transform version and whatever changes i do that i'll do the to the rotation only version um so just keep in mind that like certain IK things, I'm only using rotations and for some others I'm using transform. So like it's scale, position and rotation. Um, like I said, it's there because it's easier to debug when I can, because it's easier to, um, to test things like position wise. Like if I know where all the world space position is, I can put dots and I can, it's very easy to debug. So just keep that in mind. There's, this is not necessarily how you have to do it. It's just how I do it to make it debuggable. Cause this is still not like the final version. Um, this is just the next iteration that I'm doing. Oh, oops, sorry. That's right. I forgot that the mic is attached to my necklace. Um, so, uh, all right. So, when we apply our IK, the first thing is we need to get its world uh, uh, world space position. So we, we pass in our, our first chain bone and say, and tell the pose, the pose that we're currently working on, where, where is this bone currently in world space? Um, and it, why, the reason why it's important, because the hip has moved. So the hip is now in a whole new place. So we're basically saying, where is the hip in world space? So it saves it into our parent transform because we're that's our and the function also has a set that if is an optional where if I pass in my child transform, it actually fills it in as well. So it takes pa uh, parent and then just adds a uh, child if I need it. So now we have something here like the length. Like I said, I show the length is basically the length of the chain times the the sc the length scale. Now here I have something called leg length limit. Now, the reason why this is, exists here is really because of certain skeletons. Because when it comes, like if I want to animate a character, like, like the di robo diner, dino, his legs are very long. But the problem is when he walks, he needs to be crunched. So what I need to do is either do grounding to, uh, to control it, or um, define a new minimum length. Because maybe, maybe even though that, that leg can be fully extended, maybe it should never be fully extended. So what is the, the maximum full extent of that, that leg? So in this case, I say leg limit. So dino, is, uh, its length limit is the height of its hip. So even though the length of the, the chain is longer, I say I want to limit it by the length limit. So it's the distance from the hip to the floor. So 
if this, this value is not zero, it's going to use the chain length. So it's basically you can control the length of, the, of your limbs uh, based on your rig. Um, the, this, that's the, one of the few only customizations you need, I need to do to make the dinosaur work really well. Um, but like I said, it's, if I were to use grounding full time, then it's not that big a deal because then I will limit the thing. Um, it's to me, it's kind of like a constraint. You're, I'm applying a constraint. I was like, the, the length that this leg should ever extend should be should be no longer than this length. So this is the maximum constrained length of the bone. So when it comes to Vegeta, he's going to be using this. When it comes to the dinosaur, he's going to be using this. So the the length times the scale gives me the total length from the from the start of the hip to the end effector. Ah, so let's see. So I'm taking. Our child, our child is the bone that we're going to work on. That's the world stays position. I'm going to pass in. So I'm setting up the I, our IK target. So that's a new thing we added, the IK target. We look through that in the intro video. So we're going to give it the starting position, the direction, and uh, the limb direction, and the actual length. So when I pass in all that information, it does it does a couple of compu computations. Uh, it creates the access and uh, the you know and everything else. So once we're, we once we pass in the target information, we then then use the solver. So each chain can be applied a solver name. If it doesn't use a solver, it doesn't have a solver name, it automatically uses the, the limb solver. So when it comes to the dinosaur, he needs to use the three bone solver because he has three bones in his leg, where Vegeta only has two bones. So it has to be two different solvers. And then once I know the solver for the for that specific chain, and I have all this IK information already saved into our target. I, I basically say, well, run the function that exists in target, give it the chain, our T pose, our working pose, and our world space um, parent transform. Because it's because it needs to compute using the bind pose or the T pose um, for the bone. Like we've done with the hips, we had to use the bind pose. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna quickly look through it and um, I recreate videos like a year ago about these, these solvers. So the, the idea is the same. So the idea of like, I just want to quickly over, overview it, the, I, the concept behind um, like the limb. The limb solver treats everything as a triangle. So the upper arm and the lower arm are once are two sides of the triangle. And the final side of the triangle is from the, sh let's say for like an arm, is from the shoulder to the hand. So, that, so if you take the, those three lengths, they actually form a perfect triangle. And the only thing, so since you have a triangle, you have, so you know three lengths of the triangle. You know the length of each bone and the length distance from the shoulder to the end effector, or to, from the shoulder to the hand. So if you know three lengths of a triangle, then you have, then you can use the law of cosines. And this, like, you know, like equations can be rewritten. It's the SSS version. Uh, I found it on some math site. So they call it the SSS version, I guess. It's when you know all the lengths of a triangle, you can use this specific iteration of the law of cosines to compute the angle. So that's all we do. We, do, we, we, we use that to compute the angle and then we do a bunch of other maths. And then we do the exact same thing. And the only difference is we do you know, pi minus that angle because it's the reverse angle um, for the second bone, and that works beautifully. And, th and that's how we have Vegeta's limbs work. Uh, for the dinosaur, he has three bones. So he, he we still deal with triangles. We still do, um, we still perform uh, the law cosines with the SSS version because we know the length of everything else. But what we're going to do, instead of treating it as a triangle, we treat it as a parallelogram. So if you want to look at it, you can say like from D to C is our first bone, D to B is our second bone, and B to A is our third bone. So we, it's basically the zigzag. Um, but if you, if, like, if you need a shape, that's what we do. So since you have this zigzag shape, as you can see, we have tons of triangles. So from B to C to this midpoint, and then back to C, that forms a triangle. So by, by, seeing, by using a parallelogram, we can take the middle bone, cut it in half, so we know half the length of that bone, and that defines um, all the lengths we need to, to compute uh, the, whatchamacallit. Because yeah, if I figure it out at that point in the center, I then know the length of all three sides. 
So that's what that function does. It, it, like I said, it takes this parallelogram and then the center bone, the middle bone gets cut in half to form the top triangle and the bottom triangle to figure out the, the, the angles of all the bones. So that is the idea of the three bone solver. Um, so I don't use like fab IK um, or any of those like iterative IK solvers. I'm actually using mathematical ways to actually solve it in the single pass because like fab like a lot of systems use fab ik especially when it comes to like a three bone solver i have yet to see a three bone solver online and what they use is like fab ik uh, or uh, ccd uh, they're like uh uh ik solvers that um that that iterative so that means you have to run it maybe three times or ten times to get the, to get things aligned just right where if I'm doing this more mathematical like approach, I do it all in one go and I'm done. It's like I don't have to realign anything. It's just it's everything just mathematically correct because I'm reducing everything, the triangles and then computing the angles. So the limb and the, the, the two and three bones are very mathematical uh, in terms. And I went to more more like whiteboard stuff when I did the, the videos a couple years ago. So if you're more interested in that, then that's what you can do. Um, so yeah, that is the, that's the three bone solver. Um, you know, you, just, you have to compute all these lengths and then, then you, like I said, then it kind of rinse and repeat using the law of cosines. So it, it like bone A and then bone B does the inverse and then uh, bone C does the inverse again. It, it just becomes rinse and repeat. They're like, like I said, like the only biggest thing is that we need to start figuring out all the lengths of our triangles and then we can use the law of cosines. Uh, and that is the solver we use for our dyno. So, and that's it. And, that, and it just automatically applies it, and it's very simple. Uh, so if I do this, and this, and this, just apply all of it, every single limb, refresh, and there we go. There's Vegeta. There's Vegeta with his arms and feet all in the right place. They're, 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 they're rocking it. Uh, what else? Uh, so now if we want, we can bring in our dyno. Boom. There we go. And like I said, his foot is up, but he has like his bones, like his bone structure is very different because he has all these extra bones in his leg. So he needs a different solver and he'll work differently. Um... Anything else I need to turn on? No. So if I want, I can just start adding animations. I can just run the animator. Refresh. And there you go. And as you can see, the feet are touching the floor just right. Um, like I said, just by using the length of the bone, it, it does a really good job because, I don't know, like I said, it works. The dinosaur is pretty much the touching the floor. The only thing is his foot is not. Uh, well, he's using l a length limit. And once the foot starts moving a little bit, you'll, you'll have to be touching the floor a lot better. Um, but like if I can, sh if I want, if, I, if you want to see, if I don't apply the length uh, of the bone, or if I do a refresh, this is what he looks like. So the, the leg does function, but like I said, you need like a grounder. And so it, uh, so you can kind of see how it, the leg looks like if it gets fully extended. But if, I, if I'm not using grounding cape, I want to like add a constraint. So if I add that constraint, and there you go. So this way I can see it better. So that's, like I said, it's just that little extra that's very easily configurable. Uh, it's just an extra constraint applied to the skeleton. And, it's, and that value can be, can change from frame to frame. So like if for some reason you want to extend the length of the bone, you just change that length on the, on the, uh, on the rig and, and it'll be, just be applied in the next frame when you render it. So, it. so it's not like something you just, you you set once and it's stuck there. You can't, it can't change per frame if you really need to. If you need to control the length of the bone, uh, if you have like a special code running the dinosaur for specifically. Um, that's it. Uh, the only thing I, I missed, I totally forgot to mention last yesterday about the the, the hips. Um, let me just quickly look right here. I totally forgot this part. Um, so yesterday I talked about the hips, how they scale perfectly, and that's why they don't match up because the the length of this leg is longer than um, 
the length of the other legs. So Vegeta might be faster and the dinosaur will be slower because he has the shortest leg length. So like I said, when you do, when you use that, a lot of that scaling, it just, anim, uh, it just moves. It, every, the character moves based on a scale, which is normally what you want. But if you wanted to, everyone to share the exact same speed, um, after you scale the position, you have to keep Y a scale because you need the up and down. If you don't do the up and down, things don't look right. Um, but what you can do is reset X and Y back to the original movements. So if I refresh now with that set, now everyone's uh, should be running at the same speed. Did I mind if I the right file? Yeah, they should be. Yeah, now they're at about the same speed, I think. It's hard, hard to tell. It's hard to tell, but they should be. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's one thing you can do if you want to remove that scale movement and X and Y, because that's where movement's done from X and Z, not Y. X and Z. Um, wow, this video is like 35 minutes long. Uh, just as, it's just as bad as the hips. I was kind of hoping this would be shorter because it's an easier thing. So that's it. That is our video for our IK movement. As you see, we're, now we're building it up. We're, we're building it up and, and everything's working really well. Um, you know, Dinosaur doesn't have arms, so we can't animate his arms. Uh, but we can animate his legs just fine uh, using the right IK solvers. Um, so I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, please like and subscribe. And um, yeah, uh, in the next video, we're going to deal with uh, the feet. We're going to... Uh, Control the feet, because this because Dino, you can tell his feet is not is not being moved correctly, and it, the feet should be fairly easy, and it will it'll actually add to the to the to the, to the animation, because if the feet doesn't look like it's working, it, it looks like crap, but yeah, it's it's doing its job, it's doing a really good job, so we're we're like halfway there, we we got most of the body working just right, so I'll see you guys tomorrow uh, when I create the the foot IK.